In the last video in week one, I introduced the technique of implicit differentiation. This was a technique for calculating the slope to a locus, even if the locus wasn't the graph of a function. This week, I'm going to work with more implicit derivatives and slopes of loci. However, I'm going to work with a particular class of loci, and the first thing I'm going to do is to define that class. So remember the word locus means the set of coordinates that satisfy some equation. The equation can have any kind of functions in it, and there can be any number of coordinates. This example has trigonometric functions in the locus and uses three coordinates, so is a locus in R3. Most of the loci I've encountered so far in this course and the previous calculus course have only been in the variables x and y. These loci define shapes in R2. A common term for these shapes is plane curves. Curves because they're made out of curved lines and plane because they exist in R2, which is a plane. This here is a plane curve with an exponential and square root terms. This week, I'm going to work with a particular set of plane curves, the algebraic plane curves. These are loci of some polynomial in the variables x and y. For a polynomial, I can only use positive whole number exponents of x and y, and then I can multiply by coefficients and add up the terms. This is a polynomial with four terms. And with the equation of this equals zero, it gives me a locus, which is an algebraic plane curve. An algebraic plane curve has a degree, which is the same as the degree of the polynomial. I hope you are familiar with the degree of a single variable, single variable polynomial. It's the highest exponent. For these two variable polynomials, the degree is the highest sum of the x and y exponents in an individual term. So degree 1 polynomials are still lines. For degree 1, only x, y, and a constant can show up. The general equation of a line is ax plus by plus c equals 0. And I don't use the slope-intercept form here, since I want to allow vertical lines as well, and vertical lines can't be written in slope-intercept form. Degree 2 polynomials are conics, circles, ellipses, parabolas, and hyperbolas. The degree two terms are x squared, y squared, and xy. The latter since the exponents, one and one, add up to two. This is the most general form of a conic as an algebraic plane curve. Any multiples of the three degree two terms, then any multiple of x and y, and then a constant. This is again more general than the introduction of conics in calculus one, but the shapes I get from these equations still do fall into the four types of conic. Here is an example of a conic in this new setup. This is an ellipse, but no longer oriented along the axis. By having this full, completely general form, I can get all circles, ellipses, parabolas, and hyperbolas, and they can be centered anywhere and oriented in any direction. And there are algebraic plane curves of higher degree than two degrees beyond the conics. The conics are nicely classified into four types, but for degree three and higher, such a classification becomes much more difficult. A much wider variety of shapes results from the equations. This is a degree four um, algebraic plane curve. The highest order term is four x y cubed, which has exponent one in x and three in y. So the degree is one plus three equals four. The resulting locus is a strange mix of a closed ellipse-like piece on the left and an infinitely extended piece on the right. This is typical of higher degree conics. They can have multiple components and each component can be bounded like a circle or an ellipse or unbounded like a hyperbola or a parabola. Here is a degree six algebraic plane curve. Degree 6 because both the terms x cubed, y cubed, and y to the 6 have total degree 6, and they are the highest degree terms in the polynomial. A strange and complicated shape results. There are three components. Two of the components are unbounded, one with a sharp corner, and one closer to a diagonal path across the plane, and then there is one bounded component as well. And things can get more and more complicated with higher degrees, with various components and self-intersections. This is the graph of a piece of a degree eight algebraic plane curve. It has five components, probably all of them unbounded, and many of them intersect with each other. Here is the equation of the degree eight algebraic curve from the previous slide. There are two terms, x cubed y to the five and x to the five y cubed, which have exponents which add to eight 
and those are the highest degree terms. These examples show that algebraic plane curves can get pretty complicated pretty quickly. But there is a rich amount of structure here, and the study of algebraic plane curves has been an important part of mathematics for hundreds of years. Mathematicians want to answer questions about these of the following type. If you give me the formula for an algebraic plane curve, can I know how many components there are? Can I know if the components are bounded or unbounded? Can I know if they self-intersect? Can I determine their types? How many chime times they change directions? Can I determine their slopes and their tangent lines? This itself is a whole branch of mathematics with many fascinating results. In the videos this week, I'm just going to scratch the surface. I'll look at some specific types of algebraic plane curves, and I'll answer a couple of these types of questions. This is a more abstract, less applied piece of the course. These curves are interesting to mathematicians just for the pure geometry of it. The shapes are interesting, and we want to understand them. I want to show you just a bit of that theory to give you a flavor of how it works, and in particular, how calculus is important to it.